another day, another beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for another beautiful day. And I've just been thanking Him for the privilege of being able to have an opportunity to to have an hour with Hashem a day. I, today I spent a little bit over an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and, and it just felt good. And I started in one place, and then uh, yesterday, thank God, I was riding my bike. I was we, me and my son were riding bikes and skateboards together, and we found this beautiful area right here, and it's a beautiful uh, pond and beautiful trees. And I think this might be uh, my new spot. I don't know. Who knows? Hashem keeps taking me different places, and so uh, I don't know this feels this feels amazing. Uh, very 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 peaceful. So today we are continuing with Rebbe Nachman's Outpouring of the Soul and we're going to jump right into it. So chapter 16, Finding Oneself in the Psalms. When a person recites Psalms, the main thing is to say each Psalm for himself. Although the Psalms appear to be speaking of wars, the wars in the Psalms are those that each individual must fight against the evil urge and his troops. A man once asked, the Rebbe, how can a person identify himself with the Psalms in which King David praises himself, such as the verse, Keep my soul because I am devout, Psalms 86, 2. The Rebbe replied that one must identify even with such Psalms. One must give himself the benefit of the doubt and seek in himself whatever merit and good points he can find. In these points, every person can be considered devout. The Rebbe then explained that scripture says of Jehoshaphat, his heart was lifted up in the ways of God. 2 Chronicles 17, 6. If one wants to walk God's paths and truly serve Him, he must lift his heart to some degree. The Rebbe also said that at the beginning of the prayer service, we say, what are we? What is our life? We denigrate ourselves a great deal. However, then we say, but we are the children of your covenant. We then strengthen ourselves even more and speak of our greatness that we are God's people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is what one must always do when serving God. Lukut Moran, Book 1, Lesson Number uh, 282, and Lukut Moran, Book 2, Lesson 125. Number 17, pouring out one's thoughts. It is very good to pour out one's thoughts. Psalms 142 and 3, before God, like a child pleading before its father. God calls us his children, as it is written, you are children to God, your Lord. Deuteronomy 14.1. Therefore, it is good to express one's thoughts and troubles to God as a child complains to its father and pesters him. A person may think that he has done so much wrong that he is no longer one of God's children. Still, he must consider, sorry, still he must remember that God always calls him his child. We are taught whether good or evil, you are always called his children. Kiddushin 36a. Even if God has dismissed you and told you that you are no longer his child, you must still say, let him do as he wills. But I must do my part and still behave like his child. It is very good if you can awaken your heart and plead until tears stream from your eyes so that you stand like a weeping child before its father. Rabbi Nachman's wisdom, lesson number seven. This is something that I've been doing a lot. It's just really pouring out my heart, pouring out my heart, pouring out my heart, pouring, pouring, pouring. Sometimes I have days where I am in tears and sometimes tears can't come out, but after I get done, I, I feel, I do feel a lot of release and I feel like God hears me. I notice that the more that I pour out my heart, the easier it becomes, especially starting out on this journey to having these conversations with Hashem every single day, doing Hebo to do, sometimes it can be challenging because some people who have never done it before, they're like, man, you know, I'm just talking to myself. I'm just speaking to the air. How do I know? How do I know God hears me? So it's like, you know, it's it's the same way when you first start dating, right? I remember when me and my wife first started dating, we, we didn't know each other like that, and so there were awkward moments. How do we get comfortable with each other? We just kept talking. We just kept spending time together, and that's the same. It's the same idea with building a relationship with the Shem. One page thirty-two. In a letter, Rav Nassan discusses the verse: Is Ephraim? A darling son to me? Is he a dandled child? As often as I speak of him, I recall him and my heart yearns for him. Jeremiah 31 20. The Midrash cites a debate as to whether a dandled child denotes one who is two or three years old. 
The commentaries note that according to those who maintain that the verse is speaking of a two or three year old, the child in question is so young that it cannot speak except with a few stunted words or half expressions. Nevertheless, the father delights in the child's words and tries to satisfy the child's desires. According to the opinion of that the child is four or five, the verse is speaking of a child who can actually ask its father to give him something so that the father can fulfill his request. Although the concept is not very clear, I explained the words somewhat more deeply and I gained great encouragement. The Rebbe told us that we must converse with God each day and this Midrash gave me much strength. From the teaching, we can see that even if a person cannot speak at all before God and finds it impossible to express his thoughts, he is still precious in God's eyes. This is true even if he can, can speak only in hints and have phrases like a child of, of two or three. Sometimes God helps the person and he can then express his thoughts more clearly like a child of four or five. Therefore, it is very precious before God when people try to speak to him. The verse, as often as I speak of him, can also be translated as it is enough that my speech is in him. From here, we see that the power of speech is so great that it cannot be put into writing. Therefore, we must allude to it in just a few words. However, from all this, we, one can understand enough to strengthen himself in his speech and meditation before God. Of course, it is best to speak clearly before God. But if one cannot speak clearly, even the broken phrases of a two or three year old are very precious in God's eyes. One must keep this teaching in its simple sense, since it is our eternal life. And it is impossible to pass through this world without it, since our only power is that of speech. Alim li Tarufa, number 254. Happiness and contrition. When a, hap when a person is happy all day long, it is easy to set aside some time each day when he can express his thoughts before God with a contrite heart. But when one is depressed, it's very difficult to meditate and speak to God. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, number 20. Number 19, true contrition. Contrition is in no way related to sadness and depression. Depression comes from the side of evil and is hateful to God. A contrite heart, on the other hand, is very dear and precious to God. It would be very good to be contrite and brokenhearted all day long. For the average person, however, this could easily denigrate into depression. One must therefore set aside time, some time each day for contrition. At a given time each day, he should meditate before God with a contrite heart. The rest of the day should then be joyful. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, lesson number 41. Number 20, or chapter 20, depression and contrition. Depression is like anger and rage like a complaint against God because he is not fulfilling one's wishes. Contrition, on the other hand, is the feeling that a child has when he pleads to his father, to its father. One is then like a baby, weeping and complaining because its father is far away. That's beautiful. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, lesson number 42. Number 21, so we're on page 36, or lesson number 21. Maybe we should call these lessons instead of chapters. Okay, lesson 21, the joy of contrition. After true contrition comes joy. A sign of true contrition is when one is later truly happy. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, lesson number 45. Lesson number 22, daily meditation. One must be very worthy in order to be able to meditate for a given time each day and regret what he must. Not everyone can be worthy of doing this. The days pass and are gone. And one finds that his life is over and he never once had time to think about the meaning of his life. Therefore, one must make sure to set aside a specific time each day to review his life calmly. He should consider what he is doing and ponder whether it is something worthy of his devotion. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, Lesson 47. Lesson 23, Meditation in Bed. King David was able to compose the book of Psalms only because he was very strong in meditation. The main time that King David would meditate was at night, under his bed covers, hidden from the sight of all others. He would pour out his heart before God. Thus he said, every night I meditated upon my bed with tears. Psalms 6 and 7. Happy is the one who can follow this practice, since it is the highest of all. Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom, Lesson 67. The Rebbe also discussed the idea that when a person lies down to sleep each night, he should express his thoughts to God and pray that he should be worthy of coming close to him and serving him. If he cannot speak to God because his heart is too hard, he should still moan and sigh because he is so far from God. He would then be worthy of coming close to him. We'll stop there. So we stopped on page 37, less than 23. I, I've actually experienced that before. 
having a super heavy heart and I could literally say no words and I would make noises or sometimes I would just sit in silence, right? Rebbe Nachman talks about that. Like if you can't even, if you can't even say a word, the fact that you have the desire to spend time with the creator of the universe and you made the effort to carve out time to try and talk to him, it's a very, very great thing. Rebbe Nachman also talks about how there will be times where all you can say is just one word and you have to, you can just repeat that same word over and over and over again. I've done that many times as well and, and he said this too is very great. So I hope that these videos are of some value. They're actually really valuable for, for me as well to be able to go through this book because I've never gone through the entire book. So as some of you guys are learning, I'm here learning as well. And it just really just gives me a chance to uh, kind of speak out certain things that's in my heart as well. So that's it for today. I'm going to enjoy some of this beautiful scenery for a little bit more and then I'll head back home. So I pray that you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. And I really, really hope that your time with Hashem is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. Your connection to Hashem is getting even deeper every single day. I love you, my friends. Have a good day.